Welcome to Impact Factor, your weekly hookup with breaking medical studies. I'm Perry Wilson. This week, sexually transmitted infection rates are on the rise. Should we worry about sexually transmitted infection rates among serial monogamists? That's the assertion in this study appearing in JAMA Network Open. This study is chock full of tantalizing statistical tidbits, which I'll get to in a second, but I think the conclusions are a bit premature. Let's walk through the analysis. Okay. We know from multiple prior studies that individuals with multiple sexual partners at the same time, the technical term here is concurrent partners, are at higher risk of STIs. But what about the serial monogamists, the individuals who have a sexual relationship with one partner at a time, often separated by months of sexual inactivity? Researchers from the UK used the National Survey of Sexual Attitudes and Lifestyles to identify 8,867 sexually active individuals between the ages of 16 to 44. The survey asked a variety of questions about sexual preference, sexual activities, sexual partners, and, critically, sexually transmitted infections. Digging into this paper reveals some really interesting trends. First, take a look at this figure, which plots when people start a relationship with a new partner relative to the end of a relationship with the old partner. On the x-axis, we have the time gap between partners. Time zero in the middle there means that the very month you ended a relationship with partner A, you started one with partner B. Sorry, partner A. Note the spike at time zero. On average, the gap between partner A and B was about two months in this study. But there's obviously a range. Negative time gaps imply, well, that you started the relationship with partner B before you ended it with partner A. You'd think that the longer you had a concurrent partner, the higher your risk of STI, but that is not exactly what was found. In fact, as you can see in this chart, the risk of STI persisted a few months into a partner gap the STI risk starts to really trend down after about a six-month gap in men and a four-month gap in women. The argument the authors make is that this persistent risk of STI, even among the serially monogamous, means that this crowd is unsafe, writing, quote, given the long infectious period of some STIs, this outcome means that biological opportunities for STI transmission may exist even among individuals who have not had concurrent partnerships. In English, they attribute their main finding to the long infectious periods of STIs like chlamydia. But there's a real problem with this interpretation. Do you see it? Because really, my risk of a new STI should have nothing to do with how long it has been since I've been in a sexual relationship. It should be related to how long it's been since my new partner has been in a sexual relationship, a data point not captured in this analysis. My alternative conjecture, that it's the new partner that really matters, is actually supported by another finding in the study. When asked, 40% of men and women stated that their most recent partner probably or definitely had sex with someone else during the relationship. And sure enough, the individuals who were suspicious about their partner's fidelity had a higher rate of STI. Now, that's what I call biologic plausibility. In the end, when counseling patients, it's not that we need to worry about serial monogamists, we need to worry about everyone. We need to remind all of our patients that, just like in this study, we often don't have as much data as we'd like on our sexual partners. So, practice safe sex, partners should get tested for STIs before entering a new relationship, and if you meet anyone named Partner A, save yourself some heartache and swipe left. For Medscape, I'm Perry Wilson.